Money won't create success. The freedom to make it will. Nelson Mandela. Hey, hustlers. My name is Christian and I am the host of The Hassle Show, where we have amazing, real, no filter conversation with successful entrepreneurs. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. I'm super pumped and excited to have you here. I cannot wait to share today's story with you because it's actually from a very good friend of mine, Heather DeSantis from Heather DeSantis Public Relations. But, you know, she has one of those amazing stories that we have to share and that you have to hear, okay? But before we jump into our call with Heather, I want to remind you that all the show notes for this episode will be available at thehassleshow.co forward slash THS6. That stands for The Hassle Show, THS6. Along with our free book club where you can check out the entrepreneurial books that we recommend. And, you know, we will continually be posting a lot of content and courses and things you know, for free for you. Okay. So make sure you're constantly checking for new content on our website. And if you haven't done it yet, this will be the right moment to subscribe to our podcast. Okay. Because this is going to allow other people to find our show and to find our message and be inspired what all the, all the entrepreneurial journey that all the entrepreneurial stories that we're sharing. Okay. So please hit that subscribe button. It will mean the world to me and you will be helping a lot of other people to find us. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in with Heather DeSantis. All right, Hustlers. So in today's episode, we have the amazing and incredible Heather, a super good friend of mine, and I'm super pumped and excited to have her here. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You have no idea. Yeah, me too. I mean, you know, we've been together probably, what, like over a year now? And I saw you almost day zero. I saw you like day one, how you started growing, and I started seeing all the craziness that you were doing with your PR movement and all the craziness that was going on. So I was, I was just so excited that I couldn't skip having you on the show. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's amazing to be able to look back and think about all of the bumps along the way and the growth that you have had. I don't think any of us in a million years would think where we are today is where we ended up. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think when we met, you had just quit your job, like within 30 days or something like that. Just quit my job. Wow. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to dig into that and see how things are now, but definitely we're going to talk a little bit about how was that feeling back then. But, you know, before we jump into that, uh, talk to us a little bit about how you got into PR. How was all of this public relation craziness started? Yeah. So for the longest time, I always dreamed of being a TV personality and anchor. So that was always in my heart because I loved storytelling and connecting people, but really kind of being the person to spread good news. And I was a communication major. And then I ended up interning at an advertising agency where I only worked with food brands. And by being there for four plus years, I learned everything under the sun about how to secure media and how to write marketing plans, how to execute um, and everything in regards to that. Very cool. I love that. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people, I think that having a job, even when you have entrepreneurial tendencies, I think gives you that insight and that exposure to what is it like before you go on your own. And I think that was very smart of you to do, you know, your first step to get there. Oh, Absolutely. So looking back in time and, you know, because I, I know you did quit your job and, and went full time with this right before you quit, did you have any doubts that you could do this as a business and you could actually make a profit out of it? I had no doubts, but it's so funny and that I never thought I would start my own PR agency. When I quit my job, I had no intention of doing PR at all, um, really because I knew I never wanted to work for anyone else. I knew that I was very stressed working 14 hour days at an ad agency and I didn't want that. Uh, there was also a really strong non-compete and that I couldn't work for another agency. But honestly, at the time, um, I really got interested in um, being an entrepreneur because one, I was shaped from my family, they were entrepreneurs, but two, I got involved in network marketing, which I made lemonade money, um, but I was grateful for that opportunity because it really did 
teach me grit. But when I left the ad agency at the time, I thought I was going to do network marketing, which was fine. But when I was in some social media groups, Facebook groups, people asked me to do some freelance PR. I saw how easy the effort was and how easy the money came in compared, comparatively speaking, uh, you know, network marketing in two years, I made 12 K, which is great. And, you know, it's not a lot, it was lemonade money, but when I saw PR came easy, it was my passion. I still had that same excitement for every interview opportunity for every client, even four years in. And then I saw that I may, I had made in two months time, 12 K versus 12 K for two years. It just, it made sense. And I realized that it was what I was supposed to do. That's amazing. That's an amazing story of how you transition from what look at the, at the moment, you know, when you look back and you say, yeah, I mean, it was a good gig, but then this one came along and this was, this knocked it out of the park. It's crazy though, because what happened is the first person who wanted my help was a company that had did websites and she wanted one TV segment per client to help with SEO and she paid me a hundred dollars per TV spot. Um, and it's crazy, like over a year's time, like now I charge 10 times that, 20 times that. So it's crazy what can happen over time. But I knew I was meant to do PR because I literally wrote my pitch, sent it to a new market, Reno, who they didn't know who I was. And I got a yes 30 minutes later from a producer that I never had worked with before for a client that I never had pitched before, um, which is then when I had the epiphany of this is what I'm meant to do. Wow. It's really amazing to hear your story. And, and that's the reason why we had it to share with all the hustlers that are listening to us. But how was that, how was that feeling when you started, on, started getting these clients? What were you thinking back then? I was really excited and I just wanted to serve them and give them as much results as I could. And I, I was like, Oh my gosh, like when I first started out, the only reason I honestly started out is because I wanted, I went from making like $50,000 a year, a normal paying job, typical 20 year old to then leaving my job to working full time at a gym where I was making So I went from making 4K at a normal job to like 1200 at a gym. And I was just stressed because my identity was like, holy shit, like I'm not being paid my value and worth. So when I first started out for PR, really my goal was just to get back to my income um, that I made um, in the real world, nine to five. So make 50K a year on my own terms. And like... I'm just blown away about the growth that has happened organically because I built my business primarily only through referrals and traditionally building my business. So like every week, non-negotiable, I would have 20 sales calls or connection calls with people. Um, I didn't even get a website until um, a year in and I didn't even do Facebook ads and funnels until now, which is a year and a half later. So I built my business um, very, um, you know, traditional without, you know, I use social media, but I didn't have bells and whistles. So to be where I am now to have built a business where like, it just pinched me to like see the growth in my company and like non-negotiable know that like I've grown it to where it is now in a year's time just like blows my mind because I never... I never saw how big it would be until now and how I would be able to help clients bring in seven figures in five months from PR and just really like push them to their higher version. So I never knew um, until things started happening. And now because I keep putting myself with people who are like 10 times ahead of me, um, I see that vision and I'm really able to push myself to the next level. Very cool. That's an, that's amazing. That's truly amazing. I'm inspired just by listening to this, to this story. And I hope everybody listening, you know, gets inspired to go after their passion and go after what they came up to earth to do. I mean, you know, you're not tied to a nine to five. You can do go out there and do whatever you want. So looking back in time, um, you mentioned that you switch from being a full time, you know, a, a pretty well paid 20 year old, and then you switch over to basically close to the minimum wage and you were basically being underpaid. 
but you you want it you've had that feeling you had that entrepreneurial tendency and you wanted to go on your own and do something how hard was that transition for you how long did it last was it several months so i quit my job june 15th of 2015 and then that august i started working full-time at lifetime fitness which was a major gym working 40 hours a week um i think i probably brought in 2k a month at that time i was still doing network marketing that December, so December of 2015 is when I got my first set of, you know, small clients for $100 a TV segment. And then April is when I got my first real client. There was a woman who I always aspired to be on social media. I loved what she was doing. I reached out to her. I said, I wanted to work with you. I wrote our traditional proposal. Um, I brought her on my first client, my only paying client. I had um, a $1,200 a month. Uh, from there, I started organically to get referrals. I was still charging $1,000 a month. And then from there, I continued to work at the gym and build my business to then January of 2017 is when I stopped working full time at the gym. And I really stayed at the gym because I needed health insurance and to be super transparent, I had noise from family, you know, um, noise, just like, you know, you should stay there until you get it to a certain level. But I mean, when I was able to leave the gym, I saw my business explode because black and white numbers, you know, I went from you know, it's just a progression. Like when I first started out, my first paying client, I probably brought in $300 a month to December to April. It was about $2,000 a month to um, December was about 10K a month to now is like about 30K plus a month. So I didn't really leave the other low paying full-time job until probably a year and a half. But when I worked at the gym, I still worked full time on my business. I mean, working 24 seven, and I was able to get lifetime fitness, which is like the largest health and wellness company as a client. So I sought out that offer opportunity since I worked there. So it didn't happen overnight at all. Um, it definitely took time and now, um, I only do this full time. I, well, I don't work full time. I work all the time because it's my obsession and I used to, um, but my business now is my only sense of income. And then also I would say, I'm really thankful because I've never, I'm really cautious about debt. And although I'm making money, I'm not spending money because I'm investing everything back into my business. So I don't put any expenses on a credit card. I physically am paying out of my checking account, which I think is really important to live within your means as an entrepreneur um, and kind of not put things on credit cards. And like, you know, credit cards aren't bad. It's good debt, but you know, it feels good to be able to pay for everything out of what you have for your investments. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so looking back, I know you mentioned that you had some noise from your family and, and friends and things like that. And I know the feeling because I went through that and I still do. I mean, even, even, a few days ago, I still, you know, I heard it again. It's like, why don't you just go get a job? So wh how was that stopping you? You know, what, what I know, I know you probably didn't want to make them upset. You know, you always want your parents to be proud of you. But how was that feeling going through that transition? It, it, nothing stopped me. I would just say it created like emotional blocks. Because then I also struggled with my identity right now is working all the time every day because I'm building something big. And when I left, um, when I left my ad agency, I moved home and my family struggled with that. They struggled that I worked 24 seven. They're like, you're working 24 seven. You worked at corporate America. You complained about working 24 seven and now you're doing it again and you have no work-life balance, you know? Um, so that was a struggle. Um, but I moved and now I'm with, live with other like-minded people who are entrepreneurs. So I don't, I don't have the noise of, oh my gosh, you're working all the time. Like, what are you doing? You know, um, removing that noise helped me significantly because I know I have about probably another six months of pressing on and working all the time. 
to then be. I see that and I know that and I know that it's needed and not everyone um, sees that and the noise really gets in the way of you being successful because you feel their energy, you feel their emotions and it's, it's hard. It is. And it does, it does get on your nerves and it does get into your mindset. I mean, not only family, but friends making these comments and doubt, you know, I, I feel like it makes you doubt of yourself. You can be on top of, you can feel on top of the mountain. And if somebody comes and tells you something, whatever, it can kill your mindset. So I know it's hard, but you know, I'm so happy that you were able to go push it and, and now move away. And now you're on your own out there in San Diego. So that's pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah, it's good. So what, what looking back on all these struggles that you had between work, life, balance, family, everything, what would you say was like the biggest down moments that you had one of those that you felt almost ready to quit a lot of times i'll feel drained because everyone wants a piece of you all the time so bringing on clients that weren't emotionally a good fit for you um was hard um because you want to serve them so and also learning how to tell clients that that you don't want to serve them because it's not a good fit so getting yourself to a space where you know your capabilities and you know who that potential client is and lovingly decline serving them as a client because you know it's just not a good fit. And that was a huge challenge because you don't want to say no to people. Yeah, exactly. Because especially, you know, you're doing it for the passion. And now that you have a lot of people that want your services, now how do you turn them down? It's like on the, on the flip side, I mean, it's a good problem to have having to turn clients down because you have way too many. <laughs> yeah, and I would say the other thing too is Facebook groups. I used to get so stressed out about Facebook groups. Why like is that? All posting all the self comparison, what everyone else is doing, happening to be in groups, happening to posting. And it's very humbling when you get to a place where you feel like you can stay in your own lane and be you and do you and not have to be active in social media groups. Um, I stressed about that a lot. Yeah. So how did you were able to stay in your lane and focus on your lane? Did you just quit the groups? I'm still in the groups, but I just don't even look in the groups. I, I don't even put, unless I like really want to know something, I guess I just fill my time with other things that are more important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's very important for people to stay focused and stay on their lane because sometimes you're on chapter one or two and you're comparing yourself to people that are charting chapter 15 and you know, they're years ahead of you, but you still compare yourself and you're basically just being tough on, on your own because that's really what you're doing. Just there's no comparison. If you're just starting out and everybody listening, there's no comparison. So I think that's a great point that you touched there. So for other people that are listening to us, what would you say to them to uh, help them, you know, stop comparing themselves to other people? Yeah. I would just say, figure out your X factor and why you're different and just become obsessed with it. And then also really like, allow yourself to surround yourself with like-minded people like intentionally every week connect with other people who are higher than you to really take you to the next level and of course personal development and you know I think a lot of times people create products and programs before they're really needed so really do some research to see if it, there's a need but then also to like see who you can help support with your initiative without having to create it all yourself. Very cool. So it looks like you've come a long way and you're headed, I think you're headed to a big, big thing and you're, you're about to explode. I mean, I know you're, you're doing pretty well, but I think you're about to explode and amazing things are in your way. But what would you say would be your secret to success to all the success that you had and all the things that you've achieved? What would be your secret? My secret is I have no, I don't live in the gray. It's either a hell yes, it's a hell no. Um, everything, I have a sense of certainty. Before I talk to a client, before I talk to a media, I already know the end result and the yes. Very black and white answer, I love it. All right, so we're gonna move a little bit from your story to what I like to call the hassle round, where we're gonna try to step you out of your comfort zone. And I'm basically gonna give you, I'm gonna throw a word to you and you're gonna give me the first word that comes to mind and just just let it out okay cool. sounds like a plan okay. <laughs> all right hustle hate it i don't hate it Work. but uh um hustle um hustle and meditation <laughs> all right work uh passion employee culture boss 
Myself. Rules. There are no rules. College. Stepping stone. Weakness. Growth. Strength. Sharpening the saw. Motivation. Personal development. And last but not least, books. The secret. There you go. Awesome. I love it. pretty well there. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't went blank. Very cool. So, um, you know, I'm very inspired with your story. I'm definitely very, very proud of you of what all the things that you've achieved, especially like I said at the beginning, I've seen you grow and I've seen all this progress and you're the exact example that we're looking for at the hustle show where we show people that there is no overnight success. There is no start a business tomorrow and two days from now you're a millionaire. It takes time and it takes dedication and it takes Primarily, it takes passion for me. You know, I don't know if you agree with me on that. No, I agree. And it's not, I mean, to be super transparent, I mean, it's what, so one of my clients helps uh, people make more money by increasing their wardrobe. So like, seriously, like I, there are days, there are weeks where I've worn yoga pants every day and I don't leave my home and I work 24 uh, seven. There have been days where my room is super messy when I was at home and I was an entrepreneur, I never would freaking eat and my like self care sucked. So like now I'm like super into like eating clean and paleo and working out, but I mean, it's not easy and it's not sexy and it's not glamorous and it's just real raw and honest. But when you feel so connected to your mission, you just get obsessed. I was thinking today, I have this emotional connection to my business that is like, the same connection as I would if I saw a puppy in a fire, you know, and I want to save it, you know, that obsession. That's very cool. <laughs> so to all the hustlers that are listening, um, is there any motivational quote that you would like to share with them to keep hustling and to keep pushing and to keep going after their dreams? They might still be on the fence trying to decide if they should quit or not their job and go entrepreneurship, or they might already started something, but they're not there yet where they want to be. So what would you say to them to help them stay positive and stay pushing? Yeah. So if it's, on, if it's on your heart to make it happen, it's on your heart for a reason and you have to do it. My favorite quote of all times is do not go where the path may lead. Instead, go where there is no path and leave a trail. So if you have in your heart to be an entrepreneur, like it's there for a reason. You have to act. Don't overthink it. It's not perfect. There's no set plan. You just have to really act and follow your intuition. And if you're coming from a sense of service and being pure and just really wanting to leave a big impact, you're doing fine. Don't overthink it. You just need to act every day, um, protect your mind and really surround yourself with other people who are ahead of you. My grandfather always taught me never to walk with someone that has a limp. So as you go through the process, you need to um, really step out of your way and create a circle of influence for you because probably who you have in your circle right now isn't necessarily where you want to be and that's fine, but it's learning how to not take what they say so seriously to heart and really creating a circle of influence of people who are where you are and where you want to be. Awesome. I love that. Is there any way that people can connect with you if they want to follow your, your progress or if they just want to, you know, maybe they need some PR help or, you know, yeah. you're, you're the expert in the area. So how can they connect with you? Yeah, they can follow me on Facebook at Heather DeSantis, or of course we have an amazing supportive Facebook community called get featured on media um, where we just support each other and give you PR tips and PR leads and really just support you um, with a platform um, to share your message. Yeah, and, and I'll make sure that we put the links in the show notes at thehustleshow.co. I'm actually a part of that group to get featured in media. It's an you amazing are. community. Yeah, I love it. It's one of my, it's probably one of the only groups that I do post and, and comment Yay! and reply. Everyone's yeah. amazing. Everyone in there is truly um, remarkable. Yeah, so to all the hustlers that are looking for tips, tricks, or just insights, you know, you're going to have to jump on this, on this amazing community. Yes. Well, I mean, thank you so very much for taking the time to talk to me today, Heather. You know, we're, we're, we're close, but I know you're super busy, so it's not like we talk every day. 
I, you know, I had a blast today talking to you. Very inspirational story. And I'm just, I just can't wait for it to go live. Me too. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And to all the hustlers, I mean, we're going to have the show notes at the hustle show.co forward slash THS six, where you can connect with Heather and join the community and all the amazing things that she's doing. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the Hustle Show audio experience. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And even if you didn't, make sure you subscribe to the podcast right now. It's still free. Visit thehustleshow.co for all the show notes and to watch the video experience of this episode. We'll see you soon.